Hi friends, I have been a minimalist for 13 years and in that 13 years, a lot has happened. I've raised three kids. We sold our house, we bought an RV, traveled the US in it. We even traveled with my husband and my daughter nomadically throughout Europe with just a backpack. But one thing has remained the same. I'm still a minimalist. And today I'm gonna to share with you a few of the lessons that I have learned after living a minimalist lifestyle for over 13 years. Minimalism really made me consider my values and what was important to me. It made me see the world uh, through a different lens. My idea and view of the world really changed. It changed how I saw what success meant and what that meant to me and my family. And minimalism has given me a lightness and the ability to let go of this ideal that I thought I needed to have and obtain in order to be successful or have worth or value. There is no one perfect way to be a minimalist. Each person is unique in their lifestyle with who they're married to and their families and where they live and how they live. There isn't one path that's right and one path that's wrong. Throughout the 13 years, minimalism really changed for us depending on how old my children were, where we were living, if we were living nomadically or staying put for a while. It always changed and flowed depending on what our lifestyle was. Minimalism really strengthened my marriage. It created this open dialogue for the first time between my husband and I, as we became more clear on what our values were and what was important to us and our family, um, where we wanted to spend our money and the decisions that we were making, we started making decisions in tandem. We became this united team on the same page with the same vision and the same dreams to go after. Minimalism is not for everyone. There have definitely been a lot of times in my life where um, money, success, big houses, fancy cars was my priority at the time. And not everyone is going to be a mindful consumer and they are gonna like brand new cars and brand new phones and that's okay. Not everyone wants to be or is interested in being a minimalist. Minimalism has made me stop being envious of other people's material items. I used to spend so much time and energy and thought just looking what other people had Kind of that keep up with the Joneses and see the fancy car and see the brand new house and I realized that what other people have is their business not my business and I can now um, appreciate and acknowledge the beauty of a big giant house or a yacht or the a brand new Tesla or a car or whatever it is and I can appreciate that without feeling like I need to also possess that same thing my self-worth is not defined by what I own. We became minimalists in 2008 during the Great Recession, and we were kind of forced to sell off all of our things so that we could pay utilities and pay our mortgage. I was really attached. I felt like my identity was getting diminished every time something would leave my home. I had no idea how much my identity was wrapped up into the items that I owned. And minimalism has taught me that my self-worth and my value is not determined by the stuff I own. Attachment to stuff makes us really uptight. I remember we were cleaning out our garage and um, my husband accidentally threw away these beautiful copper, um, sconces I, I was furious with him I was so mad for that day the next day the following year <laughs> I was really mad that attachment to things to stuff made me really uptight and and insensitive and 
all I did was distance myself from the people that I love over an object. The someday syndrome. I used to be frozen by making decisions because of the someday. So I would keep owner's manuals in case I needed them someday or all of the different sizes of the earbuds in case I needed those someday and the black tie dress just in case I needed it someday or things that I thought I might someday use like a crock pot or a sushi making kit or a harmonica. I had become completely frozen from making decisions based on the someday syndrome. And really what it was is just procrastination. What are some of the things that really bring out your someday syndrome? I'd love to hear. Also, I'd really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe and like. It helps my channel grow so much. Thanks. Minimalism has simplified my life. It's really trickled into all aspects and areas of how I live. And from minimalism, I started really tapping into living more mindfully and intentionally. I don't put as much thought or energy into things that I need or want to buy. Instead, I take simple joy and pleasure in things like nature, baking bread, making cookies or planting something. I live in awareness and live mindfully and this really helps me to live with my value system which makes choices really simple and easy and makes my life much more peaceful. We don't always need to upgrade to the newest item. We are continually bombarded by marketing to entice us to get the newest model of car or the brand new feature on a washer or dryer set or an updated phone or whatever it is. I choose to just use all my technology, appliances and cars until they no longer work. And this makes it really easy for me to resist upgrading to all the fancy new things. I spend a lot less time cleaning, fixing and maintaining items. When um, I had a big house filled with a lot of stuff, it took me a long time to clean it. Once I started downsizing, decluttering, and living minimally, the less things I have, the smaller home I own, uh, the quicker it is for me to clean. And time is such a valuable commodity that, you know, when it's gone, it's gone. And I really value getting back that extra time that I used to take in, in cleaning and organizing things. I save so much money as a minimalist. It's actually pretty surprising how much money um, you can save as a minimalist, not only in not purchasing items, but also I don't have to pay anyone to clean, fix, or maintain all of my stuff. Minimalism is a fluid practice. Throughout the last 13 years, I have gone from raising three small children to becoming almost an empty nester. My life has gone through so many changes, and as a result, my minimalism has also gone through many different changes and stages. Minimalism should be able to flow and grow and move with your lifestyle. It's not like a set it, forget it thing because it will always change and adapt according to what you are doing in your life. And by welcoming and adapting to these changes, you can live a happy, minimalist lifestyle. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps my channel grow. And check out some of these other videos on mindful living.